Hey guys, Coach Becky here, and welcome to my triathlon strength workout. Let's review some optional equipment. First, an ankle band will be very helpful today, but not required. A resistance tubing will also be helpful, but not required. A set of weights will be the handiest and probably the thing I recommend having the most. Moderate is fine. I will also be using light and heavy kettlebells, but if you only have one or if you just have dumbbells, that's fine too. You can really make anything work today, so adapt to what you have like any triathlete will. All right, guys, let's get rolling with cat and cow breathing. So on all fours, just tuck your chin, roll that back up, exhale, and do the opposite. So it's really just about like arching your back and tucking your tailbone into, I call it scooping your lower back. Um, lifting your chin, lowering your chin, and rotating your pelvis to match the movement. The, um, the problem that most beginners have with this movement is they try to do it with their arms. So just know that if you're new to this movement, um, it's all in your spine, okay? So really try to arch your spine, pull your, your, tilt your pelvis right there, and then exhale, do the opposite. There you go, way to wake up the spine. Kneeling hip cars, this one's a little tricky, okay? But not impossible for you, here we go. So you'll just notice that I'm making a giant circle through my hip, that was one repetition right there. Why don't you jump in here now? Extend your bent knee back, rotate your knee outward, roll around like you're going over an imaginary hurdle, then lift your knee, rotate back around and down. I'll show you from the front. We're gonna do two more. Try to get three of these in using that first one as a demo. Anytime there's something new today, use the first repetition I do as a demonstration and then jump in. Most people are visual learners. Very good. Up, rotate your knee outward. We're just practicing all the movements of the hip really on this one. That's why it's such a awesome exercise, that hip car. Very good, let's try the other side now. Again, we're gonna just push the knee straight back, rotate outward rotate that foot inwards like we're going over an imaginary hurdle and then go back the same way we came by pulling the knee in rotating the knee out and returning to the start position it's just as much rotation and as much space and movement as you can get through that knee joint car stands for controlled articular rotation so you want to do these with intention and control let's do two more here push the foot back out and around and down again Pull the knee forward, out, around, and down the opposite direction. Try one more for me. The main purpose is really connecting with our body here and creating space and movement in our hip joint and increasing the ability to rotate safely without injury. Well done. We're gonna go into an ankle dorsiflexion stretch next. So in a, in a nutshell, you just have your front foot 90 degrees forward and your bottom knee or foot 90 degrees the other direction. And you're gonna lean forward until you feel a stretch in that forward ankle. The trick here is, and here's what it looks like from the front, jump in here if you'd like. We're gonna hold for another 15 to 20 seconds. Is to keep your, foot, um, your front foot on the floor. If you wanna apply some more body weight forward so you can feel that stretch or place the hand on the Achilles tendon, um, that's fine too. We're really trying to just get a nice stretch and resilience there in the, uh, the ankle department, the Achilles. Great one for runners, great one for swimmers and cyclists, or maybe you're somebody that hikes a lot and thought this looked like a good functional workout for you. Really any athlete can make this workout work for them. I'm a triathlete um, and these are my go-to moves when I'm in season to increase resilience, mobility, and sport specific strength. So very good on the dorsiflexion stretch. Great one for the Achilles. Next, I want you to extend one leg in front and kneel on the other leg. If you need a target, if you're not very mobile, boom, grab a weight or a coffee table and reach towards that. Okay, so that's kind of level one version there. Really, we're just making this a dynamic hamstring uh, mobility and stretch, uh, but you'll also get a little bonus in your lower back too. So just reach forward there and come back up. Reach forward and come up. I have all my sport athletes do this one, but for me as a cyclist, I actually feel like it replicates right there, aero position for me. So that's kind of what I think about on this one. Uh, 
cycling can be really hard on your body. It's not a good anatomical position to be in. So um, sometimes your training should reflect the poor anatomical positions you get into so that you're ready when it comes to race day. All right, let's switch sides here. I'm doing about six to eight of these forward stretches. When we get into our main set, I'll always tell you the reps here, but for the most part, if you're doing a mobility or stretch or balance exercise, you're sort of targeting 30 to 45 seconds. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. If you got a side that's a little bit more tight, you might want to add a few mobility reaches on that side too. That's totally fine. All right, this one is fun. Swimmer mobility on your tummies now. Go ahead and bring your fingertips together on your lower back. Take a deep breath. Inhale, squeeze the shoulder blades, squeeze your butt and core muscles. Slowly extend your arms using your triceps. Slowly rotate your palms overhead, reaching as far as you can overhead, reaching, reaching, reaching. Slowly rotate the palms back, again, slowly for control. Bend at the elbows, interlock the fingers and relax. Take a deep breath. We're gonna do two more of these swimmer mobility. Squeeze the shoulder blades, squeeze your glutes and core. Slowly straighten your arms, squeezing your triceps. Keep everything taut as you rotate and reach for your imaginary water, rotating the palms overhead and slowly rotating back, bending at the elbows and resetting. That should be a little bit tiring, so take a deep breath and rest as you reset. This is swim specific muscles here that we're activating and engaging. Here we go, squeeze the shoulder blades for the last time. Squeeze the glutes and core, straighten the arms using the triceps. Keep everything taut as you rotate the palms overhead and slowly rotate the palms back, slowly bending at the elbows and relax. Excellent way to wake up the entire backside of the body and work on posture. This next one goes hand in hand with it as well. It's the alternating Superman on the tummy. I stay neutral. You're gonna lift your right hand and left foot and then left hand and right foot. So right arm, right, left leg, left arm, right leg. So opposite arm, opposite leg, eyes and neck stay neutral. Another swim specific movement that's great for waking up the lats, the glutes, the hammies, etc. We're doing 20 of these total. Very good. All right, grab your band. We're gonna begin a little monster walk series. So the band goes around the ankles. If you don't have a band, you can do this without anything or skip ahead. Okay, shoulder width, shoulder width apart on the feet. We're gonna rotate the foot's feet, foot slightly inward and just walk. I'm using the length of my mat. You can do two yards, whatever space you have, you can use that. So you're gonna walk forward and backwards with the toes rotated in slightly. I'm doing that three times, forward and backwards with the feet kind of pigeon toed, if you will. And we're, we're changing the direction of our feet to target different muscles. So we're gonna do regular forward monster walks next. It's really essentially just resisted walking. <laughs> Great way to strengthen your hips um, and strengthen some of the specific muscles you use when you're walking or running. So kind of just an injury prevention, hip strengthener. You'll probably feel your quads start to talk to you and your very weak, likely glute medius, which is why we use the band. Kind of wakes up the glute meds because they're a notoriously weak muscle group. All right, now like a cowboy, feet turned out, you're just gonna walk forward and backwards. So we've got the feet internally rotated, externally rotated, and sort of normal anatomical positions here. Just a great way to kind of wrap up our warm up here that we've been going through. Hopefully gives you something different to try. If you've been doing a lot of run training and you're feeling extra tight, maybe this one feels like a good way to unkink some of those knots. Last time walking forward and backwards. Very good. Excellent job. All right, while we've got the band out, why don't you go ahead and use it for our next one. Running man. So bring the band down around the toes. Again, if you don't have a band, you can do this one really well body weight. You're just going to do alternating high knees with the band and you're going to get the arm swing going as well. So you always want to drive the opposite arm to the opposite knee. Think eye socket with the hand, think hip pocket with the elbow. Okay. Try to avoid a cross swing. And from the front, I'll turn and show you here for the last eight. If you're somebody that pronates or supinates, this is a great time where you can kind of look in a mirror and watch your foot, see if it does that on its landing. Eye socket, hip pack out on the arms, neutral feet. 
Very good, Running Man. All right, now while we have the band there, let's do some penguin walks, mostly because they're super fun. <laughs> Just little waddles forward and backwards for the IT bands, glute meads, kind of those weak supporting muscles right where my hands are. You can kind of feel that. The trick on this one is to take really small steps, really, really small steps. It'll get messy quick if you start to make really big steps. So just little baby steps, kind of get the lateral muscles fired up, waking up. Take a little break if you need to there. And I'm not sure where the weather's at, uh, where you're watching this, but it's really uh, fantastic weather here in the Seattle area. So happy to be outside training uh, with you guys, getting open water swimming in, all that good stuff. So. All right, very good. Now, while we've got the band out, we're gonna do a fun band superset. We'll do it twice. We're gonna do 12 band squats. I like to cross up my arms here and make them trunk squats. So we're doing 12 of these, the band's at the knees. We're gonna jump right in. Again, if you don't have a band, just go ahead and do 12 body weight squats. Starting off with a body weight circuit, kind of a great way to ramp after uh, a good dynamic warm up that we did there. And we'll come to the floor and do 12 bridges or hip ups. I'll show you from the front here on the first one, you wanna keep the knees shoulder width apart. That way you're using the band as a little bit of resistance. 12 of these as well, get the glutes and the core fired up. A great uh, practice is to exhale as you press up or exhale on the hard portions today. Love a glute bridge for lower back pain relief activating the glutes and core and stretching out those chronically tight hip flexors that anyone that has a pulse tends to have. So let's unkink the knots today. While getting strong, you can do both. All right, back to that band squat. Cross up the uh, shoulders if you want, or you can kind of do this version. I like to hold something right at my chest just to remind me to keep that chest proud or chest up. Um, a lot of times we can run into trouble with squats when we have poor posture. Um, but again, do what works for your body today. Technique is something that, uh, you know, has to be modified to fit the individual and the individual's needs. Um, you won't see me on my bike looking like this, that's for sure. But for all intents and purposes, uh, when I do squats, I don't, you know, think about cycling. So just kind of a fun devil's advocate to think about how does this translate to my sport? Is it the muscles I'm training to get strong? Or is it the, the specific body type movements that I'm replicating? And sometimes the answer is both, sometimes it's one or the other. Um, you gotta listen to your body ultimately. And hopefully my workouts help you guys get in touch with your body and get your body stronger, but make it stronger in a way that's functional to you and the sport and the lifestyle that you have. So, you know me, I always have to have a monologue somewhere in my workouts and I guess that's it for today, so good job. <laughs> All right, up next, we're gonna do uh, resistance band shoulder presses. If you don't have a resistance band, go ahead and just use weights here. We're gonna superset that with a split, sp a split squat. Weight is gonna be optional on that. So kneeling, go ahead and place your front foot on the resistance tubing. Your hands can be overhand, which means they're gonna face forward and press up. So that means the tubing is not around your shoulders. So here's what it looks like from the side. We're gonna do 12 of these overhead shoulder presses. There you go. Just a nice smooth tempo, one, one counting, one second up, one second down. Squeeze that core, keep those shoulders up nice and tall. Great way to get a sh shoulder press variation in is to use the resistance band in the kneeling position. Fun one to try it out. Doing it with the tubing, or if you don't have tubing, use weights. Good, good. Nice and smooth tempo. Exhale as you lift overhead, inhale as you come down. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Very good. For the most part today, we're gonna to be doing supersets and circuits. And from here on out, you're gonna be doing everything more than once too. So you can learn it on the first round and get better at it on the second round. All right, grab weights if you plan on using them. Shoulders back, drive up. I like to start in the kneeling position because I'm coming all the way down on this uh, particular variation. I want you to bring that knee all the way to the floor. Range of motion is a big focus for me, especially when I'm in season. I'm not using weight that's so heavy where I can't touch the knee to the ground and sacrifice my posture. Notice that the back heel is elevated the entire time, but the front heel is not elevated. That stays on the ground. Good, posture looks good. Uh, total reps are 10, so let's do 10 on the other side. <clears throat> on the other side here. 
So try to always bring that knee to the ground. If you have any type of knee injury and you need to do this body weight, that's fine. If you're also limited on your uh, knees range of motion, feel free to place a pillow there and reach for the pillow while doing it body weight. That's a good modification for somebody with um, rehabbing a knee injury or with some, some chronic tightness maybe that you just want to be wary of, especially if you've got a race coming up. Very good. Let's do that again. 12 banded shoulder presses and two 10 split squats. Grab that band or those dumbbells. Here we go. Press up, pull down. Nice smooth tempo. Both of these exercises are really focused on uh, building the shoulder joint. The split squats obviously for the quads and glutes, um, but they really have similar um, positions in terms of having really good posture. So a nice uh, form set to begin. I like to start that way. Um, this workout I really created off of instincts. Um, I really sat down and said, here's what my body needs to do today, and then I filmed it. So um, <laughs> that's kind of how I go through all my workouts. I just say, hey, what does my body need today? Uh, let's build a workout around it. Something that's single arm, single leg, works in every plane of movement, that's total body, and uh, improves my mechanics. So that's how this workout was born, and that's why these two exercises specifically are super set together. So try to maybe pick up on the theme and the intention there. All right, shoulders back. Same position you were doing those shoulder presses in, but now you're working the lower body. So just up and down, searching for as much range of motion and space as you can create, building the quads and glutes. Um, I, I, I guess for me, this one is a good one for cyclists. That's why I put this one in, builds cycling specific muscles. Also good for people that run hilly courses. Uh, but I would have swimmers do this as well too. Um, specifically pool swimmers that uh, uh, need to work on starts or just need to get a stronger kick. So you can make this work for a lot of different sports. The shoulder press is definitely uh, to make my arm stronger for swimming. So that's why these two exercises are in there. Um, and the positions that I have you in, like I mentioned, are great for posture work, great for mechanics and foundation work. So there you have it. Not just why we're doing these exercises, but how they're gonna help you specifically. Maybe you should think about how these exercises will help you in your daily life as well too. All right, our next um, three exercises we're gonna complete as a circuit. I'm gonna use my light kettlebell for this, but you could also just use a light dumbbell. You don't have to use a kettlebell. You could also do this body weight. I'll show you from the side as a demo. Just a single leg reach. From the front, I'm gonna also demonstrate, but I want you to pull your knee through for balance. So let's do eight together. Your reps start officially here. You don't need to reach all the way to the floor. What you don't want to do is allow your back to do the work of your hamstrings, glutes, and core. So keep your core rigid. Extend that foot behind you as far as you can. And we're just pulling that knee straight through for balance. Now here's a variation that I'm going to do in both rounds. Is After four sagittal knee pulls, I'm going to do a lateral knee pull. So it just works in different planes of movement. Uh, my hips just always feel tight, so I wanted to work in something with variety today. So go ahead and give that a try if you'd like. There you go. Single leg reach back. You don't have to pull the knee through if your stability isn't there, but I would recommend you go without weight if that's the category you're in. Try four forward knee pulls and four lateral knee pulls if you feel open to it. This one is great for all three sports, swimming, biking, and running. Uh, but to me, that knee pull really re replicates uh, my running stride. If you can pull that knee through any time, uh, that's a great thing for runners to do. There is the modification for a beginner. I should have shown that first, shame on me. Uh, but just reach towards the target, push that leg back, pull the knee through. There you go. We'll do this all again. So if I threw a lot of information at you, just know we're gonna do the eight per side single leg reaches again. All right, bridge triceps. We're gonna hold our hips in a bridge position to work our glutes isometrically and core uh, while working the triceps. Really good for uh, swimmers. Here we go, hips up, bend at the elbows, reach the weights overhead, being careful not to bring them towards your face. The elbows are stacked directly over the shoulders. To make this more challenging, why don't you try doing six to eight with one leg extended? You don't have to choose that option, of course. You can just uh, do the uh, regular bridge. I'm gonna switch legs here. Again, you could choose to just roll right through that if you wanna do regular bridges. Boom. The goal is eight per side here. 
shooting for about 15 to 16 total, depending on if you're doing that single leg version. Work in the triceps, the backs of the arms. Very good. And we're just gonna go right into a hip up chest press. So the hips are flat, and then as you press the weights up, you press your hips up. Here's what it looks like from the front. Another variation coming at you guys, just because I feel like giving you guys tons of variety. It's been a minute since I came out with a really full dynamic video. So I want you to try doing butterfly hip ups instead of just regular hip ups. It's just a nice way to open up your hips and work your glutes and hips differently. So try six of each. Six regular bridges, six butterfly bridges to make 12 total. Very good. Let's try round two with maybe a little less chatter for me and a little more sweat from you. Now that you know what you're doing and why, let's just work hard. Single leg reaches. We're gonna do eight per side. If you can, pull the knee through. After four, try pulling the knee through laterally. There's number two. Three. And four. So we're halfway. If you'd like to change it up, go for it. Keep that core cinched together. Keep those shoulders back. Try not to allow that weight to round the shoulders forward and inhibit your posture, which would in turn make your back do some work that it shouldn't be doing. Switching sides here. I invite you to try your workouts outside in nature too if you can. Definitely gives it a different vibe, a more optimistic vibe. When I was filming this, an eagle flew overhead, so I felt like that was a sign. Okay, we got the lateral pulls now for four. Yeah, just two more. And that's your last one, very good. Bridge triceps, option to go single leg. The goal is to get about eight per side in or about 15 to 16 total. You don't have to do the single leg version. Obviously the weight you choose is gonna be specific to you. I'm using 12 and a half pound weights. My kettlebell's 20 pounds, my heavy kettlebell's 35 pounds. But again, you can make this work with just about anything. Let's switch sides here if you're doing the single leg version. Remember to exhale as you extend the weights, inhale as you come down if at all possible. Just get into a breathing pattern really that works for you. Um, but a traditional rule of thumb you can always take with you is to exhale on the hard part. All right, feet down. We're gonna go right into those chest presses now. Drive the hips as you drive the weights. Exhale as you push, inhale as you relax. The shoulder, the weights are 90 degrees from the shoulders. So my elbows are in line with my shoulder blades, so if that helps you out. I did switch to the butterfly bridge for the last six. I invite you to try that if you'd like. Maybe that felt good and you're doing them all that way if you've got tight hips. Totally fine. This is your workout. All right, now the next exercise, the plank row, we're not gonna do as a circuit. We're just gonna go back and forth from the right side to the left side. So you can do this as a kneeling plank with or without weight if you're brand new. So that's is level one. You don't even have to use the weight if you don't want to. That's what it looks like from the front. The reps haven't started yet. We're gonna do two sets of 10 per side. So I want you to feel ready. Full position, let's start the reps here. So you're gonna do 10 per side. Feet or knees are just shoulder width or even a touch wider. And you're trying to keep your hips flat. So squeeze your core as you work your arms and your core stability muscles. So we're working our back, our posterior chain, but we're also working our core stability specifically. So again, you can go kneeling if you need to. That's what it looks like kneeling, full. Let's go ahead and do 10 per side again. I'm really squeezing my glutes here to avoid uh, my hips opening up. So really try to work on uh, keeping the hips flat. Picture a bowl of water on your lower back and you don't wanna tilt that bowl of water right or left, okay? Let's go ahead and knock out round two while we're in this position. This is a good one just to kind of get out of the way, if you will. Looking good out there, guys. You got it. Stay with me here. I know it's a long workout. You can do it. Working core and arms. Love a two-for-one type of workout. This happens to be our single arm exercise, kind of our key exercise here. Great job. All right, way to go, guys. Our next superset is gonna be deadlifts and Santa curls. We're almost done. 
Uh, this is kind of our last weighted superset, and then the next, the final two are kind of more foundational and core based. So I'm gonna use my heavy kettlebell. This is a 35 pound bell. You could also just use dumbbells if you'd like, or, or whatever you have laying around in the house. It's all about the hip hinge. So shoulders pulled back, hips loaded, eyes neutral, exhale and stand up as tall as possible without arching the back or overdoing your hip thrust. Hips back, hips forward. Hinge at the hips. I like to say um, push your hips back like you're searching for a wall behind you or even that you're searching for your hamstrings. This is all for the back side of the body, your hammies and glutes. You might flex your quads at the very top. We're doing 12. Posture is strong at the top, joints are stacked. Very good. Love a deadlift. Very functional exercise for any athlete. Next, we're gonna step into our resistance band. You could also do this with weights. Hold one arm at 90 degrees and just hold it there, okay? Just make sure you keep it at 90 degrees. As your arm gets tired, it'll wanna sneak up higher or lower. And then we're just doing 10 bicep curls on the opposite side. Okay, now we're gonna hold the other arm in an isometric and do 10 curls on the other side. A great way to build stamina in your biceps and as a runner, I feel like that's really important. And as a swimmer, I feel like that's important as well. All right, final, now we're gonna do 10 reps with both arms. So it's really a total of 30 repetitions. Very good. Plus we get that change of speed and uh, different types of time under tension. So mm, very good. All right, back to the deadlift. Um, kind of fast and furious on these. So if you are newer to deadlifts, I've got other videos that go over more in depth deadlift form. If you're afraid to do deadlifts, you can always do another set of glute bridges or bodyweight squats. So you're doing 12 deadlifts here. I'm using the kettlebell, that's 35 pounds. You could also choose to use dumbbells that are heavier, or if you're in your gym and you wanna just, you know, if you're watching this at the gym, you could use a barbell. It's all specific to you. So use what you have and use what's appropriate for you. Just make sure you've got strong posture, that you're using your glutes and your hammies, and you're not letting your back do the work of those major muscle groups. Well done. When you go to move your kettlebell, make sure that you're using proper technique of lifting and lowering as well, like I demonstrated there. Most people get injured on their first and last reps or sometimes even when they're moving the weight. So just a little heads up there. All right, time to work uh, static curls. Here's what it looks like from the side. You can also use a dumbbell here. 10 curls while one arm holds isometric or static. Great way to kind of prevent getting chronic injuries as a swimmer, uh, making sure your biceps are strong to handle the load that swimmers have to go under. Um, and also as a runner, I feel like this is very run specific. My arms get tired when I run long. So <laughs> there we go. And finally, the last 10 bicep curls. So you've got 10 on the right, 10 on the left, and 10 total. It's always good to play with different types of tempos and rhythms, um, make it sport specific. Uh, we're going to do dead bugs next. In round one, I'm going to show you with the band. In hindsight, I should have showed you without the band first, but just know in round two, I'll show you how to do these without the band. All right, so dead bugs, we're going to, with the band around our toes, I'm going to lower my right arm, extend my right leg, and then go to my left arm and left leg. So you're extending um, the same arm overhead as the same arm that's extending. I'll show you from the side as well. We're going to do 12 total dead bugs. And we're doing same side dead bugs here. The band just adds a little intensity. Uh, this is a core stability exercise, but if you throw the band in, you'll probably get a little hip work as well, which is always good. It's good for that core coordination as well. You got to think about what you're doing a little bit here. You can't just, you know, mindlessly do some crunches. It's not how this one works. Very good. And next we're going to do a hollow hold flutter kick. Um, I like to do these with my swim team that I work with. So arms overhead, lift the feet up, and you're just gonna do 20 flutter kicks per side. So it'd be 40 if you're counting every rep. Arms overhead, try to relax your arms, like you're stretching your fingertips towards the sky with relaxed wrists. Very good. And sadly, guys, this is it. We're just gonna do one more set of each before we stretch a little bit. So here's what the dead bugs look like without the band. Again, good for core stability and coordination. You want to work those deep supporting core 
muscles before you work the superficial muscles. That's one thing the fitness industry has kind of done a poor job helping people understand. It's all about the deep core muscles, training your body to be strong from the bottom up. All right, and the flutter kicks now. Be strong from the inside out, the bottom up. Here we go, flutter kicks, 20 per side. Again, stretch those fingertips overhead. If you have lower back problems and you experience discomfort here, A, that's a sign we got something wrong, and B, try putting your hands under your butt as a simple fix for now. All right, we're gonna need some child's pose stretching here. I love doing forwards child's pose, but I also love working different angles. So if you wanna stretch your hands to the side and push your hips the opposite direction like I'm about to demonstrate here, great for the lats and lower back. As a team, both my husband and I uh, race triathlon. I'm not sure, you know, the, the followers out there, if you guys are triathletes, uh, this is a good triathlon specific workout. If you're not a triathlete, way to just embrace a functional workout. But we've got some exciting races coming up. Hopefully, um, some of our followers will see them out there like we've done recently. All right, upward dog stretch next for the hips. Keep the ears away from the shoulders. So keep your shoulders pulled away from your ears. Another way of saying that. And hip stretch. So just lay flat, pull one knee up. Simple hip stretch. Feels good. Get about 15 to 20 seconds per side there. Static stretch. We'll be in Colorado and Idaho and Oregon in the upcoming months. So if you're from one of those states, give us a comment, give us a shout out. All right, with one leg extended to the left, 90 degrees. My foot's 90 degrees from my hip here with my leg straight. I'm gonna sit back and do a nice adductor stretch here. My arms are extended forward just to get a nice bonus lat stretch as well. Again, about 15 to 20 seconds per side for a static stretch. Do what feels good if you wanna hold it longer. That's why you've got the pause button there. Gonna finish it with a little T-spine mobility or thoracic spine, the spine uh, that's right in the middle of your back whose main job is uh, mobility, important for swimmers, just important for human beings in general. I'm just doing five per side here. I like to end with mobilizing my spines, just what felt good today. And we're almost done here. Just a few more stretches. Big reach here as you go opposite hand to opposite knee, then reach towards the sky. All right, now with your feet flexed, or your ankles flexed, I just want you to lean back. I'm calling this the everything stretch because I'm also gonna work in some overhead reaching. You're really lengthening those hip flexors, giving your quads, your hips, your glutes, and your lats by adding that overhead reach in some love. Lean back, stretch, stretch, stretch. This one's great for the knees, great for the hips. You could start with this one or end with this one. Try a few with your feet flat or your ankles extended instead of flexed. Just a nice little way to end. Good mobilization. Well done today, guys. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate you working hard. Stay tuned for more in-season and out-season workouts. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date. See you soon.